Morning guys, I hope we're doing well on this Tuesday morning. So let's uh, have a look at what we've got today. So as before, we're going to start with our reading. And we're continuing with our Matilda text on focusing on chapter 7 today. Okay, so let's look at this simple uh, question here. It says, define formidable. So obviously this is a vocabulary uh, question. And we would start by finding that word in the text and understanding how that's been used. So in this context, it's been used, it's an adjective, and it's been used to describe Miss Trunchbull, the head teacher. So let's go back slightly to try and understand the word in the context a bit more. So Miss Trunchbull, it, she's described as the boss and the supreme commander. Now, a supreme commander is uh, someone in an organisation that you wouldn't uh, argue with uh, and who is extremely powerful. So with that in mind, my answer for formidable would be that uh, it means to inspire fear into people by being large and powerful. I know this because it describes her as the boss and the supreme commander, which implies she's incredibly powerful. So that would be my answer for that one. Obviously, if you know the answer, you don't necessarily need to give some evidence from the text, but it's just helpful just to show that you understand that um, fully. OK, let's have a look at a different question. Slightly tricky one, this one, um, and it's an explain question. Question is, how does the author juxtapose Miss Honey and Miss Trunchbull? Now, juxtapose or juxtaposition means how does how is um, how are the opposites shown, should we say? So, um, let's look at how Miss Honey and Miss Trunchbull are uh, described. Now, this is the extract that I've got on the screen. Isn't all that you'll need to answer this one, but it's just some of the bits. Uh, taken from the text that are useful. So in terms of, we'll concentrate on Miss Honey to begin with. She's described as a mild and quiet person. Uh, and she never raises a voice. And she also, let's think about how she interacts with the children. She um, understands the fear uh, of them being um, obviously we're in school, maybe for the first time uh, away from parents so she obviously understands children uh, well okay she's she's good she empathizes with uh, children really well so there are points to um, discuss now we know that Miss Trunchbull is you know the opposite of that um, both with her appearance and how she is with the children so if I start with answering appearance wise how the opposite remember juxtapose is the, the complete opposite um, my answer would be, firstly, Roldar describes the physical appearance of Miss Trunchbull and Miss Honey, which are completely opposite. Miss Trunchbull is described as a large and powerful woman, whereas Miss Honey is thin and fragile. So that would be my appearance part. And then, um, as we touched on earlier, we're going to discuss how they are different in terms of uh, how they are with the children in the class or in the school. So Roald Dahl also shows how opposite the two characters are towards the children. All the children are scared of Miss Trunchbull, whereas Miss Honey never raises her voice and all of the children adore her. So again, you can see there's totally different uh, characters there in terms of their personalities and appearance. OK, so on to our maths then for today. And we're going to be looking today at reflection in the first quadrant. So first question that we've got today is, Alfie says when a shape is reflected, it stays exactly the same. Do you agree with him? Explain why. So have a go, see if you agree with Alfie on this and try and explain why. OK, so you can see that uh, in the picture you can see that uh, dotted line represents the reflection that's like the mirror if you held the mirror up that's where it would be and you can see that the shape has actually been hasn't changed size it's the same uh, it's four down on one side and four along the bottom on the other so it hasn't changed size so that's right um, and you can see that it's on the left it's one square away from the mirror line and on the right it's one square away from the middle line so that's 
it looks like the shape's been reflected correctly. So to answer Alfie's question, uh, I would agree with him because the angles and the dimensions of the shape do not change. Uh, the only thing that's changed is the orientation of the shape, so where it's positioned. So uh, in that one, I would agree with him. Okay, let's have another go at uh, a different type of question. Which images show the triangle is reflected? So again, that dotted line is your mirror line. So if you were to hold a mirror up, uh, which shape, um, depends, it doesn't matter which side you do it, you could hold the mirror up to and reflect the left shape, uh, which one would look correct? So, hopefully you've worked this one out. It's got to be this one because if you think the shape just flips over, imagine it like on a hinge, it would flip over uh, the mirror line there. So answer to this one, uh, this is a reflection because the shape appears to be flipped over but the dimensions haven't changed. Uh, they are also the same distance from the mirror line. So again, that's really important to remember uh, the distance from the mirror line uh, should be the same in both cases. This one on the left is actually uh, a translation. The shape uh, hasn't changed in terms of the orientation, it's just moved along the grid. So in actual fact the mirror line uh, is totally irrelevant in this one. So on the right you've got a reflection, on the left you've got a translation which we're going to look at later this week. Okay so um, this time um, we're going to have attempt to reflect this shape using uh, the vertices which have been labelled A, B, uh, C and D. Uh, A's already been done uh, for us so the best thing to do with this is you just need to um, work out how far away from the mirror line each point is and it just needs to be put the same distance away. So in terms of A you can see that it's three away from the mirror line so you need to move it down three from the mirror line. C is actually on the mirror line so that's not going to change in terms of its um, vertices. D is on the mirror line so that's not going to change and then B will be very much like A uh, but on this side of the grid on the right hand side so we're going to be three away so it's going to be there and if we draw it in you can see that it again Imagine it's a hinge and it's flipped over. Okay, so pause the video, see if you can reflect this one. Same strategy, uh, just make, move the point the same distance away from the mirror line. So on this one again, look, you can see we're three, A is three away from the mirror line, so we're going to move it three away. It's going to be there. Uh, B is 3 away from the mirror line, so it's going to go down to here. And then C and D are still on the mirror line, so they're just going to be in the same point. And then if we join the dots, that would be the reflection again. Imagine it is a hinge and flipping over, uh, and that's where it should go. So give those a go. Um, remember, if you if you happen to have a mirror at home, uh, might uh, make it easy for you um, but other than that just remember flip it over uh, on that mirror line and don't forget if you've got any uh, changes to your times tables just uh, give me an email and I can sort that out okay so moving on to our writing for today so yesterday we we're looking at uh, poetry we're going to be doing a diary entry today based on lockdown so thinking about our features of a diary entry, what, how do we know uh, what one uh, looks like? Uh, what should it sound like? Well, a diary entry should be quite informal and it should use a lot of your feelings, emotive language uh, in there too. And question, what makes the diary entry engaging? Well, that depends on the atmosphere that you create um, so you could make somebody laugh or you could make somebody cry. It depends on the atmosphere that you have chosen. So this would be uh, my plan for 
my diary entry. Um, hopefully you've had a chance to look at the examples in the packs today. So I've chosen the 30th of uh, April as my uh, day that I'm going to be choosing to so just choose one day uh, during the lockdown period. And as I said in the uh, packs, have a look at what perspective you're going to be writing it from. So you could this could be your own perspective. It could be a parent's perspective, uh, maybe a grandparent's perspective. Um, but I've chosen um, a very small child, a 20-month-old child's perspective. And the atmosphere that I want to create with that is a little bit of humour in there, a little bit of comedy um, too. And again, it doesn't matter how you lay this out, I've decided to do it like this. Um, it's just about getting some ideas uh, together before you start writing it. And then finally, um, these are some of my events that I've chosen to include. And uh, again, really important that you, you they must be in chronological order, so in time order. Um, so just very briefly, um, Remember, it's from the perspective of the of a small child, so had to watch the news again. Um, spent another day in the playroom uh, trying to uh, be left puzzles, but wanted to just play with the cars. Um, really missing um, his child minder that he normally goes to. Um, things that happen, so making bread buns in the day. Um, back in the playroom again while uh, mummy and daddy got on with some work and then went out to the park uh, on the bike but again a reference to the fact that you can't you can only go out once but remember the the child maybe not would understand that at this point and then finally because it was a Thursday uh, it was the NHS uh, clap for carers and uh, this time they got he went uh, out with the spoon and a pan. So they're just, just some very brief ideas, uh, events that you might want to include uh, in a diary entry. So have a think about what yours, um, what day you're going to choose, what perspective it's going to be from, what atmosphere you want to create, and then think about those events uh, in time order.